Hi, I'm Holger Müller from Constellation Research, and I'm here today with Dave Dugal, uh, the CEO and founder of Enterprise Web, uh, an interesting company, an exciting company, which does next generation interaction automation platforms that CIOs need to hear about, should hear about. This is why we're doing this video series. And this is the first occurrence of these, talking about Enterprise Web, talking about platform use cases, and then we get under the hood of really understanding what's the differentiation and the advantages. Hi, Dave. Hey, good morning, Holger. It's great to be with you. Hey, it's great to be with you too. So before we go into the details about Enterprise Web, let's tell us a little bit about yourself. All right, well, uh, I'm the inventor of 15 awarded patents uh, on complex distributed systems, uh, contributor to standards bodies, a uh, blogger, a regular speaker at tech conferences, a husband and a father. Uh, I've essentially spent my career building and turning around companies. Very, very cool. So tell me, what motivated you to start Enterprise Web? Well, uh, as you know, probably better than uh, most everybody else is, you know, over the last decade, we've seen business applications disaggregating from monoliths to services to microservices and, and now serverless uh, functions. It's like, you know, uh, what was, you know, once just sitting on a mainframe in some dark, deep data center, is now an application that runs across uh, potentially the world. Wow. And this led to an explosion of endpoints. And now as a result of that, so we got this great loose coupling, we got this great distribution. Those are things we want. Um, we've been promised essentially agility and sort of composition and all these new uh, properties. But uh, the reality is most organizations are now struggling to connect and manage all these endpoints. Uh, you know, you traditionally and, and today people are still, you know, trying to do this, you know, with one-off custom code and manual integration, but, but that doesn't scale, right? You know, people want to be much more event-driven, they want to be much more dynamic, and that's that's hard. So the challenge for the modern business is to sort of manage these end-to-end -end processes across these distributed and diverse endpoints in these highly dynamic environments and act as an enterprise, right? That's still the key, right? So. Being distributed is great, but you still want to act like a unified enterprise, right? You still like visibility. You still like management. You still like reuse, right? And that's that's sort of core to the, even the notion of enterprise web. Okay, very, very interesting. So, where do you put yourself in regards of this all making sense, and how can enterprise web help companies to do that better? Yeah, I mean, if we're going to put ourselves into a product category and sort of fit ourselves into a into a box, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're we're a no code platform at our core, right? So mm -hmm. er everything is done declaratively. Um, we enable customers to you know reconnect those operations, and event driven, end to end processes, you know, for for highly automated and agile operations. So the, the idea is, you know, Humpty Dumpty is broken. We got all the pieces. And we want to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. And so Enterprise Web is creating this sort of no-code abstraction layer that allows you to rapidly compose solutions uh, to reconnect your enterprise. Right. And, it's all, and it's all configured by metadata. That's really right. the magic, right? There, it is no code. You, you took my question away. So very interesting. No code platforms are like the, the hot segment, hot area today, because there's just too much code to build and not enough developers. So so what do you think puts enterprise web uh, separate from the pack of the many other no code local platforms? Yeah, it's it's, it's nice to be into a, in a hot category. You know, we've been working at this for a little while. So it's nice if you if you survive long enough, you know, if you muscle through, you can actually uh, break through as well. So. Uh, yeah, so we're part now of this, what's now called no code, right? Passive might have called it all, you know, et cetera. But, you know, enterprise, you know, no code traditionally has been associated with you know, business users and business developers, right? Uh, who are looking to build relatively simple apps. And the challenge there is, you know, as soon as you do something even mildly complex, you're back to your IT department for custom code and manual integration. You're sure half pregnant, you're half no code, half code. And which means when something breaks, you don't know, did it break in the no-code platform? Did it break on the, where it was manually coded and integrated? And so it, you're not you know, fully realizing sort of this no-code ideal. So Enterprise Web is a no-code platform that supports advanced, stateful cloud-native use cases. I mean, they're really the hard stuff. They're the enterprise-grade problems. Uh, no manual integration, no writing scripts, no coding events or writing or handlers, no developing interfaces. Uh, everything is late bound by the system, and the system generates your scripts, your events, and your interfaces. So, uh, you know, 
all those artifacts are made uh, available, you can view them, but you don't have to code them yourself. You don't have to maintain them yourself. Uh, so that's really the power of enterprise web is to extract that distributed systems complexity so IT can focus on the business. So when we say no code, we, we really mean no code, no compromises. Very interesting. Uh, but the question is like, what what is really then the developer experience in such an environment? How do you make complex distributed application development easy for maybe even business people with a certain degree of technology savviness? Yeah, I mean, that, that is the, the fundamental challenge, right? Because uh, distributed applications are inherently complex. Um, and what we want to do is make that easy. So, um, and which is when we use this like models to sort of hide a lot of that complexity. From an interface perspective, you know, you can interact with enterprise web you know, or API first, or you can go through a UI, but there's three fundamental dev workflow steps, you know, from a user experience perspective. You know, one is to, you know, wrap, you know, let's say a solution architect uh, wants to rapidly model the domain, right, under a single interface to essentially create a single interface that is representing a set of uh, disconnected distributed and uh, endpoints. So they're, cre they're creating a universal model that helps them communicate across those. And we make it easy for that solution architect to do that, right? They can essentially uh, import uh, any JSON, XML, or RDF files, or, yep. or they can even import a, uh, if they have a pseudo UML and a PDF file, we can even Import that as a starting point to jumpstart that process. So the, the key, the solution architect is to allow them to rapidly model the domain. Then once that domain is in place, the IT team, the IT team can essentially onboard all their solution elements, solution elements, whether they're services, uh, ser uh, systems, databases, devices, uh, etc. They can onboard those as objects of the domain, and then a service designer literally goes to a catalog, picks the domain objects out of the catalog composes them into the services, writes their business logic. That's all they have to worry about. They don't have to worry about how things integrate. They don't have to worry about writing you know, event handlers. They don't have to you know, manually develop their interfaces. The system will do that all on their behalf. So they're really just picking elements from a catalog, composing them with their, their logic, and then the system runtime uh, handles all the implementation works. And where does the runtime run? The runtime runs where you want it to run, um, and that's actually really nice. It's uh, you know, enterprise web can run on premise, it can run in the cloud, uh, it can run on a laptop, um, and actually, uh, enterprise web deployments can actually be connected into essentially a greater uh, application fabric. So you can have many deployments of enterprise web, you're essentially creating a consistent, almost middleware layer, right? Uh, that can be distributed across an enterprise, and then you can uh, uh, very easily. Uh, essentially connect them to have interoperability across deployments. So Enterprise Web you know, deploys uh, readily its cloud native itself. So it mm -hmm. deploys as a cluster of pods and essentially um, deploy anywhere. Very cool. I mean, uh, uh, that sounds very powerful also because you provide the full logging and transparency of that. Uh, but the question is, what can you build from it? Can you walk us through some use cases that I can build with Enterprise Web? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, you know, we are a platform, so we, uh, we support uh, application modernization and business digital business transformation generally, and a lot of diverse use cases. That's sort of the whole point of a platform is to provide sort of the uh, common building blocks, uh, reusable platform services. Um, you know, provide a you know a library of uh, capabilities that customers can reuse. Uh, but obviously, everybody wants to deploy those things concrete use cases. So in telecom, we've been pioneers actually in telecom virtualization automation, automation in an initiative called uh, NFV, which is sort of key to uh, 5G edge deployments. So in, in telecom, we're actually enabling extreme distributed systems automation, right? Uh, people are using our no-code platform uh, for intelligent orchestration um, in uh, maybe some of the most advanced distributed systems applications uh, currently uh, being deployed. And so that's a great example of a no-code platform doing very advanced use cases. In the life sciences, we're doing very different work, uh, equally complex, but for a very different purpose. In the life sciences, we, we support uh, research compliance and administration. So these are highly regulated, long-running human processes. Research is often generally distributed as well. So you actually have research collaborators all over the world. 
you have to comply with uh, you know, national, local, regional regulations, uh, and all of that has to be managed for a long-running study, which might go five, ten years. So uh, you know, and that's also being run off the same platform, the same European platform as those applications. So very, very different examples, right? One is a sort of extreme systems automation, and the other one is sort of you know uh, human uh, compliance-centric. Uh, processes, but uh, same technology. Uh, we just uh, did uh, another use case recently, which I know you'll appreciate, uh, working with SAP um, as part of a hackathon that they ran. And we showed how Enterprise Web could radical, radically simplify interoperability and automation across SAP and non-SAP clients. Uh, they, they were looking for sort of an abstraction, a common interface over the set of uh, SAP products so that it would be easier for their customers to uh, deploy, use, and connect mm -hmm. uh, their various services. So uh, in very short order, we were able to demonstrate that and uh, we're going to be publishing that online. So, uh, very very interesting. Launching. Very interesting. Great, great to learn so much about the Enterprise Web. I think the SAP showcase is especially interesting. And I think it will be the topic of our next video that we'll talk about. Thank you so much, Dave. Appreciate it. Oh, that'd be great. Thanks, Holden. Bye-bye.